So, side lateral raises on gymnastics rings. Here they are. Easy peasy. No need for further discussion. Oh, no, please bear with me for a moment. I promise you this is not a troll video. But you really can't do side lateral raises on gymnastics rings, right? Well, that's what I thought for a very long time. But then, by coincidence, I discovered you actually can. Kind of. Depending on a few different factors, I will elaborate later. But first, let me show you how lateral raises on rings are actually done. Please forget about the weird camera angle for a moment and just focus on my upper arm and torso and how they are moving relatively to each other. Even if you should have no idea yet what I'm actually doing here, you can see that the lateral and rear head of my deltoid muscles, as well as my upper and inner back, are really taking the load here. Furthermore, I think it would be pretty hard to deny that the relative movement of my upper arms and torso mimics a lateral raise very closely. At least the slightly bent forward version of it. And that one is considered the best technique anyway, because it prevents inward rotation of your shoulder and thus impingement of your rotator cuff tendons. Ok, so this is what the original video looks like. What you've seen before is exactly the same take, only rotated to the left by 90 degrees, as you had already figured out I guess. In order to target the lateral head of your deltoid muscle most effectively, make sure the angle between your torso and your upper arm is really acute in the starting position. To achieve that you have to do two things. First, attach the rings rather low, at about the height of your head. If you don't have the facility for that, like me here in my film studio slash living room, you can help yourself out by setting the straps to maximum length. That way you will at least reduce the relative height difference of the rings themselves and their attachment point. Second, bend backwards really far until your upper body is about horizontal to the floor. Here is an important disclaimer. If you feel uncomfortable in a hollow back position, this exercise may just not be the right one for you. In that case you better stick with dumbbells or cables. Before trying out lateral raises on rings, make sure you can at least get into the easy bridge position, like you see here, without any discomfort. Furthermore, to prevent accidents, make sure your feet have a firm grip on the ground without any risk of slipping. If the floor is covered in shredded wood, for example, you can even dig your feet in for that purpose. Here at home I am barefoot, which you can't see unfortunately, on a coated wooden floor. It works, as long as the soles of my feet aren't too dry. Now for the execution of the exercise. Before each rep, pack your shoulders by retracting and depressing your shoulder blades. In case you are not sure how that feels, just don't round or shrug your shoulders. As you may have guessed by now, lateral raises on rings is a derivative. As are all my training hacks by the way. In this case, of face pulls and rear delt flies. If you bend your elbows by 90 degrees or more, no matter how far you lean back you are doing face pulls, cause your hands will end up in the vicinity of your head. Which, by the way, is a very beneficial exercise itself but there is really no need for the millionth video about it. Likewise, if you are keeping your elbows straight but your body relatively upright, you are performing rear delt flies on rings. Also a fine exercise. But if you really want to target the lateral head of your deltoid muscle, you have to do both. Lean back as far as you can without slipping and keep your elbows relatively straight during the exercise. If this technique is too advanced for you, you can progress towards it by initially bending your elbows somewhat more. Just as much as you need in order to reach your desired number of reps. Alternatively, keep your arms nearly straight but lean backwards somewhat less. And maybe, after a few training sessions, as soon as the execution gets noticeably easier, you want to increase the resistance by bending your elbows less and leaning back farther respectively. 
Vice versa, you can extend your set and do a few extra reps with bent elbows, like you see me doing here. That way you can hit the lateral and the rear head of your deltoid muscle, as well as the outward rotators and the upper and inner back muscles in one and the same set. More bang for your buck, as some of my more famous colleagues like to say. Ok, so now you know how you could do lateral raises on gymnastics rings. But the question that remains is, should you do them? After all, you don't need heavy weights for side lateral raises, so most likely the dumbbells in your home gym will suffice. Well, here are three points in favor of the rings version. First, side lateral raises with dumbbells have a really extreme tension curve. Zero resistance at the bottom, maximum resistance at the top. On a cable pulley the tension curve is more balanced. Now on gymnastics rings the tension even decreases during the exercise. That's because by abducting your arms you're bringing your upper body in a more upright position, shortening the lever in the process. So if you're looking for a different stimulus of your deltoid muscles, the rings version is a true alternative to both dumbbells and cables. Second. As I have already explained, you can combine lateral raises and face pulls in one extended set, which is impossible with dumbbells. And third, normal side lateral raises are unilateral. Even though you are usually lifting with both arms at the same time, you don't have to. You could also do them alternating between left and right. This has the advantage that there is no risk of developing an imbalance, i.e., one side getting stronger than the other without you noticing it. However, being forced to perform the exercise with both hands at the same time, like it is the case with the rings version, has also one benefit. Both sides working together synergistically will generate more force than the sum of their individual forces. So you will recruit more motor units and thus be able to build more mass. So now I hope I've explained sufficiently why this exercise variation could be really useful for you depending on your training goals. If you think I did, leave a thumbs up and share this video with anyone who might profit from it. Consider subscribing to my channel if you don't mind waiting a while for the next video. Click the bell icon so you get notified of it. My name is Florian and I will make an effort so that you don't get bored with your training.